these are the these are the required points to express your ad. Feel free to paraphrase me from your own experience. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easy way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. They are, then they are creation tools that allow you to record edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready to talk some dynamite. Yep. All right, let's start with dynamite. Well, welcome to the Friday edition of Augusta Ali podcast, where we're we're reviewing dynamite and rampage and other important stuff. Let's start with dynamite. Yeah. So, uh, when when was it? Two days ago, it was AW Dynamite on Wednesday, and yes. there was a lot of good matches. Uh, let me just go through the matches again just to kind of remind ourselves and then I'll start with the one that went first. Okay, so uh, so we had uh, Adam Cole, Young Bucks, and Red Dragon uh, versus Dan Tamatz versus Blas D. Johnson and Brock Anderson. Yes. We, saw, we saw Lance Archer go against Wardlow as well. Serena Deep versus Hikaru Shida had a Philadelphia street fight. Sammy Guevara and Scorpio Sky had a ladder match for the TNT Championship and in an Owen Hart Foundation Tournament qualifier. Dex Hardwood wins. I'm sorry. Dex Harwood versus Cash Wheeler, uh, two tech team partners, and that's the one that we uh, are gonna start with. Owen Hart Foundation turn- tournament qualifier, tech team partner versus tech team partner. What did you think about this match? That match was good. Well put together. We had we had an FT. We had moments for FTR bald and FTR beard, but in FTR bald gained the victory. And it was a pretty good match. We saw some some Bret Hart match style moments, and it closed the Owen Hart versus Bret Hart match. Yeah, there was. I saw a lot of things on Twitter too, uh, uh, like callbacks. Uh, some from Owen Hart versus Bret Hart. Some from uh, I think it was Bret Hart versus Razor Ramon. Others, uh, other matches with Bret Hart in them or Owen Hart in them. Uh, I know the finish for sure was uh, Owen Hart versus uh, Mr. Perfect, where you know you roll him up or some something like that. It was uh, it was a lot of different you know odes to the Hart family, and yeah, Dex Harwood got the win. I really liked this matchup. To be honest, it wasn't as good as I thought it was gonna be. It was it was a great match, obviously, but it wasn't. I was expecting a little bit more, but I guess TV television is a thing and. And if it, if it were on a pay per view, I'm sure it would have been better. But it was a great match. Dex Howard versus Dex Cash Wheeler. Obviously, they're um, tag team partners. They have love for each other. Dex Howard tweeted out the other day that wrestling is like sex. Uh, that it, you get what I'm saying? So, like, that Dex Howard must really love, you know, Twitter if he's comparing it to something like sex. So, yeah, d- during the match, uh, kind of Dex Harwood kind of like I poked Cash Wheeler, and that kind of made uh, I f- it was kind of ambiguous who was the heel, who was the baby face. You know, maybe it was Dex Harwood for doing the I poke, but maybe it was just a you know a natural movement, to, and Cash Wheeler would have been I don't know considered the heel of that match. But I don't know. It was a good match, it was, as you said, well put together, and and. You know, Dex Howard is gonna advance, so hopefully he does well. Yeah, I'm sure he's gonna give it a hundred percent, and he's gonna do a lot of good, great matches for this tournament. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got anything else to say about uh, this match? I also gonna say, like, in the end, FTR won't break up, and this was a great match between two between two tag team. To Ring of Our Tag Team Champions and AAA Tag Belts Champions. It was pretty much an amazing match. And I hope that we can see more from FTR Bald and FTR Beard more often. Yeah. Well, one thing that that kind of like came to my mind, I, like, I guess a question. So Dex Howard is going to be in this tournament. He's going to be a singles competitor for for a bit now. A little bit more now that he's gonna be in a tournament. 
Um, do you think this kind of like hinders their their chances of aspiring for the AEW Tag Team Championships? Because that's uh, they've been vocal about wanting to be AEW uh, Tag Team Champions, and it was looking like they were going to be the next champions after Jurassic Express. But uh, maybe this singles run for Dax Howard is going to hinder that for a bit. Maybe Cash Wheeler uh, goes on a singles run as well, just not in the tournament. Maybe going after the TNT Championship against Scorpio Sky, which hey, those matches would be pretty good too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, should we go to the next match? Yes. All right. So, the next match, I believe, was uh, Lance Archer versus Wardlow. Mm-hmm. And this was, I it wasn't a necessarily a meat a slapping contest like we've said in the past two times, but Wardlow kind of brought out uh, you know different um, a different move set and it was pretty spectacular. What do you think about it? It was pretty fantastic. It, it was a great it was a great match. Wardlow it was like a meat slapping match. We had Archer a monster and Wardlow the war pig breaking through the barriers and performing Hurricane Rana on, on on Archer. It was a great match. We had the Powerbomb Symphony for the victory for Warlow. It did thus further the, the feud between Warlow and MJF as usual. And for next week's opponent, he just says you can't teach that mean that Big Cass will be making his AEW debut facing Warlow next Wednesday. Yeah, what do you think about that? What do you think about the insinuation that uh, Big Cass or W. Morrissey is going to uh, go against Wardlow next week? I say it's a, it's a good thing. We get, we get, we're we going to see the, how progress is w, William W. Morrissey does, like a pro- progress for him. Can he handle the big times like AEW? I mean, I'm sure he can, just uh, maybe not Wardlow. <laughs> Wardlow. Uh, is probably gonna beat him in this match. I mean, that's the whole point, right? But yeah, this this was a good match. You know, yeah. people were kind of quiet during the beginning of the match, but you know, the the powerbomb symphony is is very much over. People really want to see it, and especially once you get to that third, fourth one, people are really clamoring for more. And you know, that puts Wardlow over really well, and it people. People are going to go quite wild and crazy once uh, Wardlow power bombs either Sean Spears or MGF. So it's going to be a pretty, pretty good thing, but hopefully this comes sooner rather than later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So next was the women's match, the Serena <laughs> Deep versus Hikaru Shida in a Philadelphia street fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think about this match? Serena Deep got the win. And what do you think about it? It was pretty much a, it was a weird way for D to get the victory. I thought she should have won. This was a hard hit match. She just should have got the victory. It, but it was still a good, amazing match. It was hard hitting. It was like weapons everywhere. Cena, D, she, uh, it was actually a little early. They put the match a lot earlier, a little earlier instead of the 930 spot in AEW fully. So at least it proves that Tony Khan is treating women's re- women's wrestling with respect, and we might get a women's revolution in AEW. Yeah, well, I think I said in our uh, preview that uh, Hikaru Shida should probably get the win, but I also mentioned that it was going to be an even contest that I was really didn't know who was going to win this match, and I had forgotten that uh, Hikaru Shida had beaten Serena Deeb last time before getting injured. Um, yeah. So I think having Serena Deep win this match is is probably the best uh, idea. And you know, yes, it was a lot of uh, weapon usage and you know brawling and things like that. But Serena yeah. Deep managed to get some wrestling into it. I mean, the finish here was a submission through the, the clover leaf, which was originally used by Din Malenko. And it was good to see that move being used. And Serena Deep is probably gonna. Or it was already confirmed. I mean. I think Thunder Rosa was looking at the match uh, backstage on TV, you know, and it's it looks like uh, Serena Deep is going to be that next contender against Thunder Rosa, and I think that's a good program. I think Serena Deep and Thunder Rosa are, are two great competitors, especially Serena Deep, and it's going to be some good wrestling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll be a great, great wrestling. And 
with the thing that you mentioned about you know not being in the 930s but I mean yes it's great to see it uh, on, in the middle of the program or whatever but I mean you could also say that you know that 930s uh, spot is that co-main event spot you know but yeah. that's just me being you know kind of half serious again it's just you know nothing really changes other than you know that's time, time slot and the time slot didn't really do much yeah all right, so I guess we're gonna transition to another match, and the next match was the the multi team tag team match. Mm-hmm. Um, it was the undisputed elite and Cole Young Bucks and the Red Dragon mm-hmm. uh, versus Dante Martin, Varsity Johnson, and Brock Anderson, along with Arn Anderson. What did you think about this match? There was a pretty good match. It the, the elite got the victory, but it was like a multi man madness kind of match that. That I actually enjoyed. So you got like like two men at the same time, like two men jumps out of the ring and fought with the others. It was basically like it was a mixture, like a like an eight man tag style match. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm gonna be very like very honest too. I didn't really watch this match. It was like the point of the man, the point of the dynamite where like I was like kind of getting tired. You know, I'm kind of over Adam Cole and. The Young Bucks too. Uh, Adam Cole wasn't hasn't really been presented well. I mean, he's gone after the world title and obviously has had decent matches against Adam Page. But I mean, I think that Orange Cassidy a few just didn't do much for him. Didn't do favor any favors for him. He got he got beaten even though it wasn't a sanctioned match. He got beaten by Orange Cassidy, and that's never a good thing. And you know. Just Adam Cole has been hasn't been presented the way that you know in, in NXT Adam Cole was presented, and hopefully once you know Kenny Omega comes back or something happens with this Bullet Club angle or whatever, that, that Adam Cole kind of steps up in the gear, and you know becomes that Adam Cole that we know. Yeah, we hope we hope so. It happens. We yeah. see. Yeah, but uh, other than that, I didn't really watch this match. I didn't really have any interest in this match. I've never really watched a Red Dragon match in its entirety, uh, other than like uh, an FTR match in NXT. But uh, yeah, that's yeah. all I have to say on this match. Uh, do you have anything else? Mm. Well, at least, at least it, it gets the elite on the same page as they go to the Forbidden Door pay per view. Yeah, that Forbidden Door pay per view is it's looking like more and more of that. It's mostly gonna be a Bullet Club versus uh AW people, no? Yeah, most likely. So we could probably like say maybe uh Gorillas of Destiny is gonna go against some other, like either the Young Bucks or Red Rag and whoever the tag team champions are gonna be at that time, you know. Uh we could probably assume that. Yeah. Uh Jay White is probably gonna have a match, whether it's uh against Adam Cole or you know or maybe a AW title match against uh, Adam Page or whatever. It it's not looking like, you know, that dream match card other than maybe if you add in that, you know, Kada CM Punk or Kada Brian Dennison. But in the, to me at least at least the standards that I've seen on Twitter it's not gonna reach the standards at least. Uh, to the point that we're at today, so so far we we have no other indication, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know. All right, so uh, this main event match is Sammy Guevara versus Scorpio Sky for the TNT Championship in a ladder match. Yes. And it, this was an unbelievable match. Uh, how do you get keep on guessing? You know, like you didn't know who was gonna win until the person won. Yeah. And Scorpio Sky beat Sammy Guevara. To become the TNT champion, what did you think about this match? I think that some uh, those matches, that match was pretty. It was like a ladder match theme, but the goal was like I don't know. I think that ladder match, yes, Scorpio Sky got the victory, and it was amazing. We saw we saw a groin kick from groin kick from Ty Conti to Dan Lambert, and also let's see we had interference from Paige. Then they apparently go. Guevara, like I mean, like Scorpio Sky gained the victory by by reaching for the title and winning the whole thing, but there was one spot when Guevara did that flip thing and it hurt his neck or something. I didn't read that on Twitter. Yes, yes. 
Uh, yeah, he uh, looked like he was a little bit hurt there. Um, I mean, that's what you get for <laughs> doing these insane ladder matches, you know? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this was a entertaining match, I suppose. Uh, you know, Sammy Guevara is literally taking the Cody Rhodes spot. This was a very overbooked uh, match. Not, not the overbooked in the Cody way. It was just overbooked in the forced way, I believe. Like just adding in Ty Conti and Paige Van Zandt and Dan Lambert. I mean, doing it once or doing it, you know, a couple times is great, but they happened like uh, five times during the match. Um, I think uh, in the last sequence, when before Scorpio Sky went up and reached the TNT Championship, um, I think they did the Sami Guevara jumping onto the ladder and like knocking down Scorpio Sky or trying to knock down Scorpio Sky one, one time too many. I think it, it, they kind of like wasted, you know, some precious time. But whatever, it was a it was an entertaining match. It was a it was a all right main event, and now we have Scorpio Sky is a very uh, at least for the time being very over uh, baby face as TNT champion, and hopefully he has good matches. And uh, he's a great wrestler. He's a very capable wrestler. Uh, hopefully, um, uh, we get some viable contenders for his TNT championship, and not you know. Sammy Guevara, because he's been around that, you know, picture for a while now. Yeah. Who do you think would be a a contender for this TNT Championship next for, uh, for let's assume, a, a babyface Scorpio Sky? Other than, like, Frankie Kazarian, because that's confirmed. Uh, I think, like, how about Ethan Page? He could be a good contender. So you think Ethan Page is going to turn on uh, Scorpio Sky? Yes. It would, it would be a good contender. I, I wouldn't want Ethan Page as a champion, not yet at least. I don't think he's... To me, I don't think he's over. He's a great wrestler, a great talker. But I don't think he's uh, at that level yet. Scorpio Sky has had to you know, work his way up, and he did. And he has, and now he's reaping the benefits, you know. And Ethan Page, he's done his work, but I think he's done his a little bit more. You know, I think there's other people in line, you know. Yeah. Um, Keith Lee, Swerve, Swerve Strickland, there's Dante Martin. Yeah. Oh, what about well, Miro? Miro, they're supposed to return. A Miro. lot of people on Twitter are saying Miro. I think uh, I think Miro has had his uh, TNT Championship run. I think it's time for him to have more of a main event uh, feud, whether it's a blood feud or a, or a, an AW title feud, uh, where he's, I don't, I don't know if he wins it. You know, but I think he could, uh, he could viably contend and be a believable, you know, you know, winner. You know, he'd cast doubt to the the finish of the match, and that's what you want ultimately. Um, Miro would be a good one. I think uh, Sean Spears has been working his way up too, and I think uh, Sean Spears Scorpio Sky, uh, you know, feud would be a great one. I I don't think it's the first one that comes to the mind of people, but. Uh, They've had a, a ongoing feud for since the inception of AEW, and I think it'd be a, a good good match, a good feud, and they're two great talkers as well, so they'll sell you a ticket, you know? Yeah. Other than that, I mean, there's there's other people, I'm sure, but, uh, you know, Keith Lee and Swift Strickland, I think, um, they they might eventually get there, you know? Right mm-hmm. now, they're, they're barely coming in. Getting acclimated, they haven't had many matches. They're, I think, involved with the uh, team mm-hmm. Taz and everything. Yeah. So, so I think that's not happening for them anytime soon, right now, at least. But, uh, but yeah, I think uh, the way to go for at least the next champion is Sean Spears. Yeah. And have that like coincide with MJF winning the AW Championship off of Adam Page as well, if that's what's gonna happen. If it's Maybe it's CM Punk uh, that, that beats Adam Page and then MGF beats CM Punk. Um, mm-hmm. Whoever it is, but have MGF and Sean Spears and then FTR coincide as champions and then, you know, have the pinnacle, you know, reign supreme um, and AW. And I'm sure, um, you know, the quality of AW will uh, get better as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's all of AW Dynamite. I don't know if you got other things to discuss here. Let's see. Um, I got a couple of things to, 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 we could discuss. You know, like 
let's talk about the ROH TV deal. And we don't know about like 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 how the ROH TV deal will, be, will affect going forward with Impact wanting to get involved with with Ring of Honor since AEW. I mean, Tony Khan bought right ROH. How that will come to effect? Oh, this is like in relation to like to like Diana Prasso thing, or what? Do you, what do you mean? Like, 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 whenever Tony got bought Ring of Honor, and yes. then there was rumor, there were stories from Impact that they were looking to buy Impact before Tony Khan bought Ring of Honor, like something like that. And they were, because they were, because of that, there were a bit of, there were like problems between between Impact and AEW because of that. Yeah, well, I think. Uh... The TV deal for ROH is going to help ROH, and it might hinder Impact, and I think Impact realizes that. I think uh, Tony Khan buying Ring of Honor, uh, putting his focus there, and, you know, probably increasing the value of of Ring of Honor and, you know, the destination for wrestlers to wrestle there. Wrestle there. there. I'm sorry. Um, Impact realizes that, and they know it's going to be our competition. And... You know, I, I've heard the stories, you know, of Diana Parasso while being Impact uh, Champion or Women's Champion or whatever the Knockouts Champion, I think it is. Um, they didn't want her to, you know, lose the Ring of Honor World Championship um, before she had lost the Impact Knockouts Champions, Championship. Now we see that. I think uh, Diana Parasso isn't Impact Knockouts Champions anymore, and and... She's going to defend the Ring of Honor World Championship against Mercedes Martinez after uh, having an uh, interim ROH World Championship. I think um, even before the Ring of Honor deal, I think the impact and AEW's relationship were was strained a bit. Uh, maybe it just grew old and kind of fell, fell apart, and and you know, one didn't need the other anymore, you know, and the other didn't need the other either. So. Pretty much, it, yeah, yeah, so, pretty much. So yeah, Impact doesn't need AW, but they understand that Ring of Honor is their direct competitor now. Yep. Yeah. All right. Do you have anything else? Yeah, that's it. That's about it. Okay. So, do you want to fill the thirty, or should we uh, just end it there? Uh. Uh, let's end it there. All right. Um, when we when we come back, we, we will we will review Brand Page soon. When we come back, so thank you everyone. When we come back, we will review Brand Page. Stay tuned and and here's it. Yeah, basically, when we come back, we will review Brand Page. All right. Thank you everyone. All right, bye, man. All right. All right, we're back. We're going to now review Rampage. You good, yeah. Cody? Yeah, we good. Right, let's get, yeah, let's get on to Rampage now. All right, so let me just pull up what happened on Rampage because uh, I need a little bit of a reminder. But, uh, yeah, so last night's Rampage, or, you know, Friday night's Rampage was, uh, was you know, these are the, these were the matches. I'm just going to go through the matches. Darby Allen went against Surf Strickland. Then Jed Cargo and the baddies who would be um, Red Velvet and uh, Kara Hogan went against uh, Nightingale, Blue, and Adora. So Sky Blue and Adora. And then Keith Lee went against Colton Gunn. Yeah. And so in the main event, Samoa Joe defended his ROH Television Championship against Trent Barretta. So we're going to start off with the first match, which was... Darby Allen versus Swerve Strickland. Uh, what did you think about this match? When I talk about it, think about it, it was like a, a great matchup between Swerve and Darby Allen. It was like two high flyers. We have Swerve taking in the work, cutting down Darby Allen. Darby Allen fighting back. It was an uphill battle. But in the end, Darby Allen got the victory. That will be now he's in the Owen. Yes. Oh, yes. I forgot to mention it was an own heart uh, tournament qualifier. So yeah, uh, yeah. Darby Allen beat uh, Swerve Strickland, and now yes. Darby Allen uh, 
will advance in this tournament. I, you know, we didn't do any preview for Rampage because we don't do that. But I would have hoped that Darby Allen won. I, I mean, I thought that was a right decision. I don't know if you would agree with that. Yeah. I'll say, yeah, Dar- yeah Darby Allen should have won, but he won it anyways. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay, and because I think that Darby Allen is a more interesting wrestler. For me, I mean, Swerve Strickland is a good wrestler. I see, you know, good things in him, but uh, I think – He's still too fresh. I don't know really what he's all about other than his catchphrase, but uh, we know what Darby Allen is and what he can bring to this tournament, and surely he's going to bring uh, good matches and good quality uh, wrestling to to this tournament. Yes. Um, so, yeah, so Darby Allen is going to advance, and hopefully this tournament uh, gets underway sooner rather than later. All right, yeah. so the next one, the next match, Yes. was a six woman tech or like six woman tag team match. Jade Cargo, Red Velvet, and Kira Hogan went against Willow Nightingale, Trisha Adora, and Sky Blue. And Jade Cargo and the Bayadis won as it was expected. What did you think about it? It was a it was a good six women's match. We had the baddies involved. We saw Yargel, mm-hmm, Red Velvet. Oh yeah. That that high it was like it was it was, it was red velvet. I know it was Kay Gargell, red velvet, and the other girl, Kira Hogan. Was, oh yeah, Kira Hogan. Yes, yeah, I keep forgetting. Right. Against it was tr- against Trisha Dora, Will- Willow Nightingale, and Sky Blue. It was like like Trisha Dora most likely gonna get a Ring of Honor contract. Same with Willow Willow Nightingale. So is Sky Blue. They didn't need to lose, but it ma- it makes sense for the baddies to win this match to put them over as like a a, a new heel group for AEW's women's division. Right, I I saw like some people you know, you know complaining or you know saying that uh, you know just Red Velvet and Kira Hogan just randomly appeared in the baddie section along with Jade Cargill, and I see like where that criticism is, but uh, at least this match kind of gave a. You know, at least the basis towards their friendship. At least they have a match and they have alliances now. So officially in a wrestling match, and that's all we need really for for their alliance to to form. And they won. They it was pretty good. I think uh, the commentary. Um, you know, they mentioned that Red Velvet and Jade Cargo are really bitter en- enemies that became friends now because, as we remember, they both made their debuts or like their official big, you know, dynamite debuts. In the same match, in the Shaq match with Cody Rhodes and Shaq. Uh, so, Jade Cargo with Shaq and then uh, Red Velvet with Cody Rhodes. Uh, so, yeah, they have that type of association where, like, their enemies convert into friends. And then Kara Hogan is just a baddie, you know, joining them, with, you know, joining their whole thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. pretty much. All right. And uh, so, is that it for this one? Yeah, that's probably about, that's probably it. Okay, and then uh, Keith Lee went against Colton Gunn. Keith Lee won in a dominant fashion. What do you think about it? It was pretty much a dominant fashion for Keith Lee. It was a great dominant fashion for Keith Lee. It did lead to the the like the guns, like Colton Gunn, Austin Gunn, talking with, with it was Anthony Bowens. It was known as... It was, it was known as oh yeah, mm-hmm. it was like uh, Anthony Bowen, the player, rap player, Max Caster, Max Caster, Anthony Bowens. Mm-hmm. Yes, they had a they had a promo afterwards after losing, right? The Glove yeah, Club and and I think they like challenged each other to a match. Maybe it was in Dynamite or something, but they have they're gonna have some type of match or they're gonna team up with each other or something like that. They did something post match uh, in the backstage, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so Keith Lee got the win. We probably would have expected this, and uh, you know, people really like Keith Lee. I'm not really. I've I've been, you know, I've said before. I'm not really that much of a Keith Lee fan, but you know, I can't deny the people love him, and this is how you should be presenting him, uh, just getting wins. On Rampage, so that, you know, eventually you're going to have him. I think he's in a feud right now with Team Taz with, in a tag team match, uh, you know, 
with Team Taz as in Ricky Starks and Will Howes, along with Swerve Strickland, you know. So this is going to protect him as at least a singles competitor. So that's good. Um, so then, I mean, I, I'm just going to mention this. I think Sean Spears had a promo and, you know, basically just telling Wardlow, like, to look out. And and I think Sean Spears is a really uh, great uh, talker. Uh, the promo that he had on Rampage was pre- pretty good. Um one thing that I noticed is that now that he's he's more cartoony, I guess that's what you know AW has pushed him to do now. Since I guess people like the cartoony nature of Sean Spears and not like the actual serious pro wrestling pro wrestler uh, uh, nature of him. But I guess uh, that's too boring for people. But you know he's a uh, he's out there, you know, challenging Wardlow. So and you know. Threatening him with W. Morrissey, uh, what we are uh, can assume is W. Mor be, well, can, we can assume to be W. Morrissey. My bad, that was that was bad English on my part. But what do you think about uh, Sean Spears? You know, kind of threatening Wardlow. Hmm. Sean Spears and Wardlow. It was pretty much like a segment with Sean Spears talking about William W. Morrison, how threatening he is, and towards his, and towards, and towards Wardlow. It's most likely it's gonna have like a to lead to a big match between Spears and between him and Wardlow one in, in some point. It won't yeah. happen at double or nothing, but at some point on dynamite. I agree, I agree. I think uh I think the big match is obviously MGF Wardlow. That's the big match that people really wanna see and yeah. on pay per view. But Sean Spears Wardlow is a, is a match that uh I think will, you know, steal people's attention. But mm-hmm. uh, you know, you gotta build both of those adequately. So, hopefully, this match with W. Morrissey is a good one. So, mm-hmm. okay. So now let's move on to the main event of AW Rampage. Mm-hmm. Samoa Joe, the ROH Television Champion, defended his title against Trent Barreta of the Best Friends. Samoa Joe beat him in a mm-hmm. hard-fought match. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you think about it? Yes, it was pretty much a hard-fought match. Samojo got the victory. It was a great. It was great. It was great for Tony Khan to bring in Eon Ikabari for the for the Ring of Honor TV title as a commentator. It right. Yeah. And they probably got they planned to bring probably Cruz in. And it was good. And add to that, like, like it was like after the match, there was like a post match segment between with, with Jay Lethal. Dud and Sanam Singh, and we got Orange Cassidy involved doing those kicks to Sam Singh. Yeah, so uh, Samoa Joe was gonna cut a promo afterwards. Tony Schiavone was holding the microphone for him, and then got interrupted by Sanam Singh and you know whatever, uh, you know Jay Lethal and his friend. I forget his name, but uh, yeah, Sanam Singh comes in, and then you know in defense of you know the best friends in Samoa Joe. Uh, Orange Cassidy comes in and like does the kicks on Sanam Singh and then the brawl ensues and all that. So yeah, so the match was was all right. It was pretty good. It was good for Rampage and uh, you know obviously Samoa Joe is a great wrestler. So is Trent Beretta and you know it was a dignified television def- ROH television defense and uh, you know Samoa Joe got the victory as he should have. So yeah, that's that was AW Rampage. Yeah, it was a one hour show. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you have anything else for us. Oh, there's one more thing. It was like those those releases they did like yesterday. Was NXT releases. We need to talk about this. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Did, did you, can you introduce the topic? Yeah, I'll introduce the topic. Like there was like nine or eight NXT stars being released. And the, and and most of it was Harlan, mostly like mostly Parker Bordex, Dakota Kai. There was Malcolm Bivens, known as Stoker Holloway. He was a great manager. Right. But there was Persona, Persephone with with Indy, Indy Hardwood, Hardwell. She in the segment with Indy Hardwell. Remember, she, Persona like like the seventy days. She recently bought a house. The day she got released, that was fucking bad. Like, yeah, yeah. All right, and and I don't know why would they release Malcolm Bevins or Stoker Holloway because he's a great manager. I he could like manage anybody. I know, Lane. I think he turned down because 
someone like Omas who's a step down, and maybe that's true because Omas is is a good is a good seven feet tall guy, but he's not good but wrestler. But, but mostly to the point, I don't know what's going on with these releases, and what I heard from, from confirmation from Melter that they're gonna be main roster releases next. Main roster releases. Yeah. Oh, okay, so my comments on this is that I think uh, Sean Rossap, also the the person that uh, you know reported these releases, uh, he uh, he mentioned that most of these releases were already seen coming. Especially, I think uh, he highlighted that Dakota Kai saw the, her release uh, coming, and that most of these releases were releases of people that wanted uh, they didn't want to extend their contract, so they were gonna leave the company either way. So they, they kind of just. Uh, did it for them, you know, and obviously that's uh, not great, but uh, they weren't going to resign anyway, so they were already planning their departure on the co- of the company, so it's not like they were uh, uh, particularly, you know, taken by surprise, you know. Yeah. I think, uh, I mean, if I'm being very honest, mo- most of this uh, list of people that I have here uh I don't know. I don't. I've never really seen. I mean, they're probably people from NXT 2.0 and that I've not watched. You know, so I don't really have a connection. I know who Malcolm Bivens is. I know who Dakota Kai is, and I know who Harlan is. Uh, but that's about it. So I think Malcolm Bivens would fit well in AEW as a manager for whoever, is, whether it's Jade Cargo or some other monster type person. Dakota Kai could be a good addition anywhere. Yeah. And Harlan, you know. If developing, if he develops adequately, he could be a star in him. Uh, and then you mentioned, uh, well, what did you say? You said, uh, you said something. And it was I... like, it was that persona, Stephanie, or something I said about her buying a house while she was being released. I talked about her. Yes. Um, no, you, 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 okay, whatever. I was not going to re- remember, but, but yeah, that's, that's what I think about these releases. These releases, obviously, obviously they impact, impact them, uh, directly because, uh, they're not going to be working for Dodi anymore. They're not going to get that paycheck anymore, but, uh, at least they'll, they'll be getting what they want, uh, you know, to be happy. And yeah. that's, uh, you know. Uh, leaving the company that might have got, given them problems or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, yeah. They'll be happy. They'll have they'll have money. They'll be happy. They don't have to worry about WWE no more. They can go to like Ring of Honor, GCW, Impact, NWA, New Japan, Storm, anywhere else they can go. I remember what you said. You said uh, that uh, Dave Meltzer had said that main roster cuts are are coming next. So let's yeah. kind of speculate here. Obviously, it's not good speculation. Is that we're not we don't want these people to lose their jobs. Well, who who do you think might be you know next on the chopping block? You know what I'm saying? I feel the next on the chopping block would mostly would be Finn Balor, and after Finn Balor, I'm seeing more of. Potentially either Sasha Banks or Bailey on the chopping block. Because I know WWE gonna keep are gonna keep Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair in WWE. I know for a fact. Yeah. Yeah. Um. That those are bold. Those are bold predictions. I don't know Finn Balor. I could see why you say that. I know that Twitter was kind of like up and roar up roars after he had lost the U.S. title and. And was not doing anything much of much substance in Raw. Yeah. And I understand that, but uh, I think Finn Balor is a... I think Dodoy knows who Finn Balor is and, and the value that he has outside of Dodoy especially and also inside of Dodoy. Um, so I don't think he's going to be uh, released or is part of that per, part of that, you know, chopping block. I think Sasha Banks and Bailey, as long as they want to be in Dodoy, they will be in Dodoy and because they're part of the four horsewomen, they're the work, the work, horse women of the of the women's division there, and if they leave, honestly, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what would happen. That that would that would be huge for anybody that would potentially get them. Um, 
I would be looking more towards a Drew Gulak. Uh, he's been doing more things in uh, SmackDown. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, uh, but Drew Gulak is, is probably the person in the bottom tier of the list. Um, I don't know. It would be people that we don't really, doesn't come to our minds, you know. It's not the first people that come to our minds, you know, uh, because they're not, you know, featured. They're not talked about in the by the fans and things like that, you know. But uh, I think uh, if that's true, if the main roster cuts are coming, uh, I think our favorites are probably safe if they have something so solid to uh, play, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something something solid to play. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about? Let's see. Well, let's see. I I did. I would never. I like. I went to those, those space thing like, like last night. This, like this, yesterday, that space thing I did where they had special guests like Moose. It was on Twitter. I was talking to Moose like on Twitter. Like I had, I had, a, I only got one question. They told me one question to Moose, and I told Moose, "What's your honest opinion on Tony Khan?" And Moose's answer was, he he said that Tony Khan was pretty much an okay guy, and he respects his work, mostly like that. So you had a you asked Moose a question, Moose the Impact Champion. Yeah. And on Twitter, did he have like a Q and A or something? It was it was like a it was on Twitter Space. Oh, Twitter space. Yeah. Um, and he said that Tony Khan is a cool guy. Yeah. That I mean, I would believe him. I mean, the, from all accounts, I'm sure Tony Khan is a great guy. But also, I surprised if Moose is trying to like, you know, kiss some ass. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm sure there's a future contract negotiation right there, and he doesn't want uh, to muddle the waters between him and AEW. You know, I'm sure yeah. he he's he would test uh, the option of going to AEW. If if that that opportunity ever presents himself, you know. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. That's cool, that's cool that you got to uh to ask him a question. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So um, I'll say what I have to say. All right, thank you everyone for this is Augusta Ali production product I mean podcast, and we'll see you all next Saturday. So, thank you all. See y'all next Saturday. Bye. Bye. Bye.